Welcome to lesson six, where we're going to be continuing discussing how you can see the oneness and recognize how you are part of all that is. We just talked about you as a manifestation of the God force, of the great spirit. One of the terms that we didn't use to describe this force was consciousness. Only when we're speaking of the all that is, I always say consciousness with a capital C. And you and I would be consciousness with a small c. I want to give you a way of seeing how you are that. My mom is 87 years old. I love her dearly. She is the light of everybody's life. Uh, she just lights up a room when she walks into it. And she surprised me the other day by saying that she will go by a mirror and look in that mirror and say, who's that old lady looking back at me? And that really brought to mind an awareness that there is a part of us that never ages. I mean, how old do you feel right now? Set aside aches and pains and anything that has to do with the physical body growing older. When you were, say, 12 years old, didn't you look at people who are your age now and think that they must somehow feel different? But now that you're your age now, don't you feel the same way you did as when you were a kid? Hopefully a little bit wiser. Well, I realize now that that's how my 87-year-old mother feels, that that little girl inside her is still there and it's the physical body that changes. Now this is of course obvious, we know that, but think about that part of you that never changes. That is the part of you that never dies. That's the part of you you're going to take with you when you pass to the other side. That is what I tune into as an evidential medium when I sit with clients in this room and connect them with their loved ones. This evidence that I get from them, those who have passed, shows me that the vibration you create for yourself here, through your thoughts, through your actions, through how loving you are, is what you carry with you when you cross to the other side. And I tell people that this may give you pause, but if you're grumpy here now, you're going to be grumpy when you get to the other side. How do I know this? Because I've sat with people and felt exactly what they feel like. And I explained to their loved ones sitting here with me, well, this person feels a little bit crabby or a little bit like a curmudgeon, you know, a grumpy old man. And they say, well, that's exactly what he was like in this lifetime. One of my favorite stories came when I gave a reading for a young man who had lost his mother. In actuality, it was his father who really wanted to hear from his wife of 61 years, but he was a little bit too embarrassed to sit with a medium, so he sent his son. So I'm sitting here with the son knowing we want to hear from mom, who was married to his dad for 61 years, really excited to hear from her. And I tuned in and sure enough felt a presence over here that in my system represents a mother. And I'm expecting to feel this loving energy, but instead I reported, well, your mother's here but I see her sitting in a rocking chair and she's watching the people walk by on the street and she feels very critical. And you know what that man said to me? You've got my mom. <laughs> wow. So does that make you think, hopefully, you realize that uh, the way you are now, you'll be pretty proud of the way you'll be when you cross to the other side. But if you have room for improvement, that's part of what this course is all about, raising your vibration so that you are always radiating the highest possible essence of who you really are. That oneness that connects all of us, that consciousness with a capital C. I tell people that you don't become angelic just because you pass to the spirit world. You grow your angel wings here. That's a big responsibility and we're given limitless opportunities to practice growing our angel wings. This energy, this loving energy, is what a medium taps into. It's what you are. We just can't sense most of that spirit energy that's around us, again, because we have this frequency analyzer. But I want to give you some ways of looking at energy at vibration so that you recognize that there truly is a greater reality and that you are part of that, joined to it by the very essence, the oneness of you.
that consciousness. The point that I want to make is that, is that this vibration of consciousness, it's all relative to the higher and lower vibrations. I'm going to use a very simple analogy here of everything being vibration. What do I have here on this plate? I have rapidly melting ice cubes. They're solid. And when I hold them, I feel the cold on my fingers. That signal goes up through my skin to my brain. My brain says, oh, it's solid. It's freezing cold. My eyes see this thing and it does a search in its computer bank here and it says, ah, I recognize that. That's ice. Do you see how the brain just did those calculations based on that input? But what happens if we then look at what I have in this glass here? The brain looks at that and says, ah, that's no longer solid. That's a liquid. I can touch that. I needed that. I could taste that. And my brain simply takes the frequencies of those inputs, those signals coming into this frequency analyzer and says, that's water. But what is the difference between this and that ice over there? Simply a difference in frequency, isn't it? Otherwise, it's the same makeup. If you were to speed up these molecules even faster, it would become steam. Speed it up even faster, and we would no longer see that steam. It would be called superheated steam, and it could burn your hand, but you couldn't see it. Does that mean that it isn't there? This is the point that I'm getting to, that just because we can't see something, because our frequency analyzer is limited by the frequencies that it can interpret, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just like your loved ones who have passed to the other side. Just like the very essence of you as a spirit being. Just because you can't see your spirit doesn't mean you aren't a spirit. Here's a perfect example. You would, of course, recognize this as a fan. And you can see these blades right here. They're visible to the eye because of the frequency. But if I turn this fan on, where do the blades go? You can certainly hear the fan now, feel the effects of it, but you can't see the blades anymore. Why? Because they're vibrating so rapidly. But I guarantee you, if I stuck my finger in there right now, and I'm not going to do it, those blades would let me know they're there. And now we can see them again because I've slowed down the frequency. Those in spirit, your spirit, are not visible to us because they're vibrating so high. But does that mean they don't exist? There is another reality out there. It's all around you, but this frequency analyzer limits you from seeing it. I want you to see the beauty in this world beyond the physical world. And at least imagine that there is a greater reality and you are part of it now. I said that everything is relative. Everything depends upon how you perceive things through your brain. Do you think different creatures perceive differently? Well, in the last lesson, I introduced you to one of my little dachshunds, Gretchen. And I got to thinking about how Gretchen perceives the world. And I thought, I've heard of how dogs see colors differently. So I wrote to a friend who's a veterinarian. And she contacted a veterinarian ophthalmologist for me to give me a picture of how dogs see colors. So this picture is a little bit pixelated, but you can see it's kind of muted. This is how poor Gretchen sees the world. And I say poor because I want to compare it with how you and I see the world. Look at the difference. So much more vibrant, so much more beautiful. Yet if I were to say to Gretchen, there are colors in this world so much more vibrant than you can imagine. If Gretchen could speak, she would say, oh, Suzanne, you're crazy. How could there be colors different than I can imagine? And you know, those in the spirit world in my readings have said to me, Suzanne, there are colors in the world more vibrant than you can imagine. In our world, the colors would astound you. And at first blush, I want to say, well, that's crazy. 
But can you imagine? I like to imagine. I've gone beyond imagining to knowing there is a greater reality and that you are part of that and I am part of that. And it's all consciousness. That is the essence that links everything that is. That is what you are made of, is pure consciousness. It is that which never changes. It is that aspect of you which is eternal, which never ages, which never dies. What frequency are you vibrating right now? That's what you will take with you to the other side. Could you be vibrating higher? That's something that you're going to get out of this course, how to vibrate higher. For now, we're going to end this lesson with an exercise that will give you the opportunity for a full day to see the world with new eyes, to look around you and see your connection with all that is by seeing yourself as everything you view and knowing that everything you view is also in you. I'll see you back here after you've had a chance of experiencing that.